Hey everyone, welcome to episode 10 of Cracking the CSWE. In this video, we're going to be looking at making some really complex weldments inside of SOLIDWORKS. For me, this seems to be the easiest part of the CSWE if you have a very good understanding of weldments, which if you looked at the CSWPA weldment exam prep course that I did before, you should have. This is going to be an easier episode, so just sit back, relax, and let's learn some more complex weldment design. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's just jump right into the video. Before we get into this, make sure you've watched the first episode of the CSWPA Weldments course. On the CSWE exam, it's likely that you'll need to know how to make the Weldment sketch and either make a custom Weldment or import one. That is all covered in the CSWPA series, but what might be more difficult is using the 3D sketch functionality. In this video, we're going to be looking at a sketch that requires the use of the 3D sketch tool and then talk about practicing with it. Let's start by making a sketch on a plane. I'm going to make a simple sketch that is rectangular-like and assign some dimensions. Then I'm going to do the same thing on a perpendicular plane that we create offset to the base perpendicular plane of the plane we created the initial sketch on. While I'm doing this, let's talk about the 3D sketch. Unless you need all sketch entities to be inside of one sketch feature, it is best to use the 3D sketch only when it's necessary. What that means is in the cases of the sketches where I'm sketching on a plane, I can use the regular sketch. However, when I make the next 3D sketch, which will connect the vertices of the two sketches I create, it would not make sense to make a plane for each line, as that would take so much time. As well, since the 3D sketch is in 3D, this is more a reliable process, as it only is looking for the vertices to define its endpoint at and not the plane. To use the 3D sketch, click the drop down button under the sketch button, then to create our lines between the vertices, we can simply use the line tool and select our vertices, which probably will feel pretty weird compared to a normal sketch, but that's okay. Once we are done this, we can make our weldment. I'm going to use a circular profile of a pipe. It doesn't really matter what size, but having it circular makes it much easier because of the weird angles and the corner treatments. Then we can make our first group be the bottom sketch, the second group in the top sketch, and the remaining groups the connecting weldment pieces, as they are not parallel. Make sure you are using the end miter corner treatment. You might have to change the corner treatment for specific corners depending on what the exam asks of you, but again, if you watch the CSWPA videos, then you should know how to do that.
Here I'm looking at some of the corners which look pretty messed up. I'll fix one segment by making the trim order the same, but I won't do them all as that would be wasting your time. Again, the CSWPA video covers this. When it comes to the exam, you're going to have to make the 3D sketch. And while I did not show you how to read the drawings for that in this video, I'll be doing that in the CSWE practice series or episode depending on how I make the video. Although, reading the drawings are not that hard. It's pretty much just drawings of two sketches, as the remaining connecting segments are defined by the sketches themselves. As well, you might have to edit the sketches, but if you know how to make them, editing should not be that hard. Make sure you have the notification bell turned on to see when the practice CSWE episode comes out. Lastly, let's talk about evaluating this part. If we want to find the mass of it, of course, we can use the mass properties, but let's say we want the mass of one weldman segment. In the part selection box for mass proper in the part selection box for the mass properties, we can simply select the whole part, unselect it, and then select the individual weldment segment that we want. And we can find the mass properties. Of course, we don't have a material assigned, so we only have the volume, but in an exam situation, a material would be asked. Thank you for watching episode 10 of Cracking the CSWE. The next episode is the last episode in this series, meaning by then you should be able to take the CSWE exam. We're going to be looking at some advanced sheet metal, particularly taking imports from different file types and converting them into sheet metal designs. So, we'll see you in that video.